Hey, if you've come to watch a socially awkward introvert try and start his own YouTube channel, boy, you are in luck today. Uh, my name is David Boyce. Uh, I'm an author of a book called 52 Churches in 52 Weeks. And today you have the pleasure of watching me talk about church in the middle of a pandemic when most people can't go to church. Uh, buckle up, this will be very entertaining, um, for me anyway, for you, well, I guess you'll have to find out. Um, if this was a professional YouTube channel, um, I would try and have some type of graphic go across the screen right now. Um, all I got is this. Um, so you just imagine a flashy graphic here, maybe with some music or something. Like I said, socially awkward. Um, everyone loves a faith story, any type of testimony, and uh, mine is a little bit out of the norm. Uh, I was recently inspired by, uh, her name is Jess Cornish. Um, she was reading my blog, reading my book, and she started her own spiritual adventure called 26 Churches in 26 Weeks. She recently went on Instagram, uh, posted her faith story, and it motivated me, inspired me to kind of come out of my shell a little bit and try something like it as well. So let's get into it. So my faith story starts when I was born. Um, I was born into a very traditional Lutheran church. Um, my concept of God had always been inherited. So I was baptized within three weeks of my life and that's all I ever knew. And for the first 30 years of my life, my faith story was incredibly boring. I was always taught the same thing where I had to be the model Christian. What's that? Well, I try to do everything right. Um, you know, tithe 10% of my allowance to church each week. I would, you know, refrain from any type of alcohol. I wouldn't do drugs. Um, I wouldn't have sex before marriage. Uh, wouldn't even get into relationships uh, if, or act if I had a crush on a girl. Um, but something happened doing that because it had an adverse reaction. I always thought God owed me something because here I am doing everything Christian where is my perfect girlfriend? Where's the perfect job? Where are all these blessings that were supposed to rain down on me? And that never happened. So I always went to the same church. Uh, my pastor lovingly recalled, or he would always call it the one true church. And that's why I always believed. Um, but then things started happening. Uh, we had an associate pastor who found himself in a scandal. And our church, I won't go into it, but our church quickly swept it under the rug. The pastor left immediately. Everyone knew little tidbits here and there but it was quickly it was quickly just swept under the rug you know never to be heard from again um eventually we had new pastors come in and sermons started becoming more about well they stopped being about helping your neighbor and instead it started criticizing and uh vilifying other type of churches that weren't um similar to ours. So for instance, uh, you know, there'd be a lot of sermons about, 
other Lutheran churches who would employ female, you know, preachers or pastors. Um, there was a lot of condemnation about churches who were accepting of gays and lesbians. And then there was one Sunday morning when I was volunteering for my church as a usher. And a gentleman came in. He was dressed to the nines. Like, this guy was ready for church. And I handed him a bulletin. It was very early, uh, you know, maybe 20, 15, 20 minutes before the service started. And he took a seat in the pew. He was reviewing the bulletin I had handed him. And always in the back of our bulletins, uh, we would put a disclaimer basically saying, if you weren't a member um, without you know, talking with the pastor before time, uh, you could not have Holy Communion. You could not have the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And our lead pastor came over to him, welcomed him, and uh, the, the gentleman was kind of upset. He was pointing to the back of the bulletin about our policy regarding communion. And our lead pastor was very adamant that, you know, well, uh, the gentleman hadn't talked with him earlier in the week, so there's no way that he could receive communion uh, this Sunday. And I remember the gentleman, he, he wasn't loud, uh, he was respectfully, he was respectful, he was quiet, but he, that did not sit well with him. And the pastor and the gentleman had quite a bit of an argument uh, about this. Um, I continued handing out bulletins, you know, painting on a smile, welcoming everyone to church, and tried to, you know, not make a big deal out of it. But eventually the gentleman grabbed his wife by the hand, stood up, and they walked out. They stormed out of the church, walking straight past me. And at the time, I was very upset at, the, at this guy. Like, you know, how dare you challenge our church with what we believe? And over time, that situation kept nagging at me and it had a snowball effect um, in terms of what I was hearing from the pulpit and what was supposed to be being taught from the Bible and you know it was always this thing where you had Jesus Christ you know and all the stories Jesus Christ there was a line and Jesus Christ would jump over that line to rescue people who did not believe in God, whether it was prostitutes, tax collectors, penitent thieves, the worst of the worst. And when it came to our one true church, it was like our church drew a line in the sand, basically saying, all right, if you're over here, prove yourself. Prove yourself that you can jump over our line so that we will accept you. And that had a, it wasn't overnight. This was something that took me a long time to formulate in my own head because I had always been induct or inherited with the same type of beliefs. So eventually what happened is I stopped going to church. Uh, my attendance started to suffer and I was experiencing spiritual dryness, this spiritual stagnation. I believed in God, but I didn't feel God. Does that make sense? So when church failed me, I started looking for other ways to find God. I didn't know it at the time, but that's kind of what was going on within my own heart. Uh, nature was one. I tried to find God outside. Um, 
The other was trying to find fellowship with other Christian men. So I joined my church softball team, uh, thinking maybe that would be a way uh, that I could find God in a different type of way. So we had one important game. I was on the outfield. I dropped a pot, you know a, a fly ball that uh, cost us a run. It was a big error for, in a big game. And I got back to the dugout. And if anyone knows me, I'm pretty much the you know the coolest kind of guy that you, that you can meet. You know, water off a duck's back. Nothing really gets to me. But my blunder for my team really upset me. I get mad at myself. Um, more than anyone else is going to get mad at me. And, you know, because it was such a scene, uh, my, my pastor came up to me after the game, my associate pastor, and he basically said, hey, Dave, you need to get to church. No church, no ball. And that was the end of it. There was no talk. There was no discussion about any type of struggles I was facing uh, within the church. It was just go to church or you're done. And that's not what I needed. I needed, I needed dialogue. I needed communication. I needed to talk about what was going on in my own heart from the things I had seen. So I was at a very big spiritual crossroads in my life. I didn't want to go back and I didn't go back. So where do you go? Where do you start over if you still believe God, but every Christian you've ever known has essentially failed you? So I examined a lot of the friendships and a lot of people that I knew. Uh, my brother, for instance, um, he stopped going to church and he was excommunicated from the same one. Uh, my best friend, uh, he was a big atheist and he had been a, you know, a big Christian in the past, but, you know, after events happened to him, uh, that was the end of, of his faith. And there were a lot of young men that I also, uh, managed at the time. And, um, you know, some of them were very strong within their own church and they had fallen away as well and had become, uh, atheists as well. And it always kind of made me wonder because the Christians I always knew in my life had always abandoned me. But a lot of these individuals that became ex-Christians were some of the best friends someone could ask for. And um, I didn't know why. Uh, at the time, uh, I was um, uh, dating a Christian women. And like, I only dated Christian women. Um, I always had the firm belief and dream that I wanted to be a spiritual leader, uh, head of the household, and kind of have a blueprint for the perfect Christian family. But a lot of the women I had met, it just, through online dating, it just never worked out. Um, I had one date with um, just absolutely, you know, amazing girl. And um, the date didn't go as planned. Uh, but I remember in the conversation, you know, she was a very, she was very strong in her faith. She was the ultimate type of Proverbs 31 woman, you know, uh, the type of Christian woman who has it all, uh, spiritually anyway. And our, we were talking and she absolutely loved her church. You know, she had so many positive stories to tell about it. And then she asked me about mine. And because I thought I needed to be that strong, spiritual husband material, I lied through my teeth. You know, I told her, hey, you know, my church, the sermons are fantastic. There's so many great illustrations. Oh my gosh, you have to be there. And I was completely in a, inauthentic to myself. And what was strange was as the night progressed, it's almost like she could sniff out just how fake I was 
uh, when it came to my own faith. And, you know, the date ended. It didn't end well. You know, I'm driving back and I was just kind of telling myself, I got to do something different. Like, this is not good. So when it came to church, I kind of go back to my old one. So where do you start over? And, you know, when it came to a lot of the traditional churches that I knew or my friends had known, a lot of them would always preach, you know, their church is the one true church. All these other churches are, you know, they're not good. You know, they have their fallacies. You know, people are attending this church and they're going to go to hell. And I really was thinking I need to fall away from church. But if I didn't have church, what would that do? So, yeah, it was a very difficult time for me and, um, what do you do? Uh, when I thought about the well-dressed gentleman, um, when I was ushering that one day, all he wanted to do was have communion with his wife. And I felt like I had a whisper when I would fall asleep at night. Like, think Kevin Costner, Field of, Field of Dreams. If you build it, he will come. I had this whisper that said 52 churches in 52 weeks. I think it was a kind of a play on words because uh, I think I had told some friends you know, gosh, I got, I must be approaching, you know, 50 failed online Christian dates at this point, which wasn't true, but that's what it felt like. And, you know, when I heard, when I had that inner dialogue, you know, it's like, that can't be God. You know, God doesn't do that. Sure, maybe for some people, but, you know, I'm not crazy. Um, but the more I thought about, it, the more I knew I couldn't just give up on church altogether. I had to try this out. And, you know, a lot of the believers churned ex-Christians that I knew, they had always been spoon-fed the same idea that all the other churches were bad. I didn't want to become another statistic. I didn't want to become another millennial that fell away from the church. So what do you do? So the next day I decided to try the 52 churches in 52 weeks idea. Uh, a spiritual experiment. And I would become that well-dressed gentleman. I'd become a wayfaring stranger. I'd be a visitor each week. How would these churches respond to a complete stranger, a complete visitor in their midst? And I was extremely scared because I did not want to have any kind of confrontation, but I knew I had to do it. So I started small. Uh, the first church I went to was um, maybe at Aaron Rogers Hail Mary Pass from where I lived. Went there, um, was greeted really, really well, even though I was probably 30 years younger than everyone there. Um, second church, another Lutheran church, third, fourth. I didn't want to jump outside my comfort zone too much wasn't ready for that. Um, eventually uh, decided, okay, well, I feel like I've seen enough L Lutheran churches. Let me try some other denominations. So went to a Catholic church, uh, Methodist, Christian Science, Baptist, Episcopal, Presbyterian. I was trying to do all these different types where I could understand a little bit about, you know, why was there so much division? Why was there so many different denominations? If we're brothers and sisters in Christ, why does there seem to be so much separation and division uh, within different type of church bodies? And why is that acceptable? So eventually, um, as I you know, kind of learned a little bit more about that, I grew bored of similar 
uh, nook and cranny Wisconsin churches and decided, let me try a veterans military church outside Minneapolis. So I drove three hours that way. Uh, was probably the youngest guy there as well. And then I drove three hours back. And on the drive back, you know, I was kind of questioning myself, who drives six hours there, spend their entire Sunday visiting a church so far away? But then something kind of overcame me where it's like, this is a spiritual adventure. Like, this is, this is a little different. What else can I do? Where else can I go? And from there decided, okay, well, let's see what a church service is like in Tennessee. What's it like in Texas? Let's try one in Illinois. Let's go to Iowa. Let's go to Ohio, um, uh, Colorado and Nebraska were other ones. And the more I challenged myself, the more I challenged my faith to basically go into the wilderness to not just find God, but also find myself. And suddenly there was a shift within my own faith where I was searching for God's heart. I wasn't chasing women anymore. Um, well, not as much, but it was much more important to me that I was solidifying and building my relationship with Jesus Christ who died for my sins. How can I be like him? So from there, you know, I, I want to kind of, I, I got into a phase where I want to check out a lot of mega churches, a lot of the most uh, popular preachers at the time. So went to a church service with Joel Osteen in Houston, went to TD Jakes in Dallas, Bill Hybels, who was popular at the time and uh, outside Chicago. Um, also tried to visit Tim Keller in New York City. Was going to do Pope Francis when he visited Philadelphia, but I chickened out because I didn't want to fight through 2 million people that was being projected to go there. And um, I continued to write about my faith and continue to write about these experiences. And the more it lit a fire within myself, like I was having this Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, type of motivation from within where every single week it was completely unpredictable. You could choose your own spiritual journey. I didn't know where I was going to be the next week. And even though all I was doing was driving, finding a pew, finding a seat, and sitting down, each experience was completely different than the last. And the last stretch, I did some really crazy churches. <laughs> uh, so did a heavy metal rock church in Ohio. Uh, there was one point where I visited Missouri for to attend a Precious Moments doll chapel. Um, went to Texas where they would host professional wrestling WWE type of events in church as People would chant, thank you, Jesus. Um, I was going to experiment with other type of religions, but after attending one, um, I found myself thinking that I did not want to try something. I, it was all for Christ. I didn't want to go, you know, do, you know, Muhammad or Muslim or... Uh, some of the other type of religions out there. So I, 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 went, I steered away from that and focused on Christ. Uh, that said, I did try a Scientology church in Minneapolis. That one will deserve its own video. So church became, became adventurous for me. And am I saying to intentionally church hop every single Sunday? <laughs> no, don't do that. Um, I found that it served as a really nice catalyst to jumpstart my own spiritual stagnation when all I knew was one church 
what else was out there. And it gave me reason. It gave me purpose. It gave me adventure. Um, but it also gave me something more. Something more. And, you know, I don't know if I'm going to move forward with this vlog too much. Um, I'm not a guy that wants the spotlight or anything like that. But I don't think it can hurt. Because I think there's a lot of people out there who have been hurt by their own church, who believe God, but don't believe in Christians. And even before and especially after this whole journey, I don't have much faith in Christians. And I am one. And I don't have much faith in myself sometimes. So when I did this, there was a lot of things deep down within myself I didn't even know was there. And a lot of that surfaced to the top as I explored Christ in a very unconventional way. So by visiting these different churches, by exploring different topics, it helps self-identify what it means to be a Christian. Or what it should be means to or what it should mean to be a Christian. So I hate plugging my work. Um, again, I don't like the spotlight. Um, but when it came to 52 churches in 52 weeks, I had to write about it. And um, so I'll show you my book. Uh, the book is called 52 Churches in 52 Weeks. You don't have to buy it, but I, I want to uh, explore what I learned from this experience. Even though it's been several years afterwards, it still sticks with me. It's a very unique faith, faith testimony. And especially as we tape this in 2020 with some, as the world is completely upside down, where a lot of the churches, you can't even go in a church, uh, it's kind of lit a fire within myself again to challenge the status quo and kind of re-examine church now that COVID-19 has kind of thrown a wrench into the world and everything else that's happened. So... What I want to do with this vlog is to explore some of the church experiences I had from this, but also look into where church goes from here after such a terrible couple of, well, a, a terrible year in general. And there's a lot of things I think that I can bring to the table where I'm not preaching. I will call stuff out, but there's a lot of different things that I witnessed. There's a, I was through a lot. I'm sure you've been through a lot. Hopefully something like this might make your day a little bit better. So I'll end it on that. Um, and we'll move forward to the next video. Again, my name is David, 52 churches in 52 weeks. Hit the subscribe button uh, if you want to stay up to up to date uh, with future videos. So thanks, guys.